Hi, thought I'd do a quick two minute teardown of this uh, Samson Go mic. I really like this mic and I've been using it for uh, several years. I've basically used this, have it permanently connected to my Tagano microscope. So any voice over you uh, here on the, uh, that shot through the Tagano microscope is uh, almost certainly shot through this little Samson uh, Go mic. And what it is, it's a USB uh, microphone that has a professional microphone capsule in there, similar well, I don't know if it's the same, probably not, just given the size of it, um, as my Samson CO1U, which is my uh, mic that I use for all my video voiceover work and stuff like that. Very nice mic. And this one just uh, clips onto a uh, laptop um, screen or anything else. You know, you can clip it onto any sort of thing. So I'm also going to be using this on the Microsoft uh, Surface Pro tutorials that I do, the pen drawing uh, tutorial. So I bought another couple of these, uh, one for my Surface and one for uh, David's Surface uh, tablet as well. So I just like it. It's got a headphone output, which I've never used, so um, a bit basically mini B out. But the other thing I like about it is that it does have a uh, cardoid. You can change the pattern on it. You can change it from cardoid to cardoid with minus 10 dB uh, pad on the thing. That's just industry jargon for minus 10 dB at attenuator so if it's uh, too loud on there and it's got a little lead on top which uh, is normally green I believe and then it turns red if you're actually uh, going to clip if your signal is actually clipping so you can knock it down by 10 dB I um, usually use it in uh, one of those two positions depending on how far I am uh, from the mic and then it's got an omnidirectional one too which uh, is great if you're in a room for example, when you sit in the middle of a table and you're trying to capture everyone's voice, then you'd use the omnidirectional uh, pattern mode. But anyway, I, th I think it's a really high quality uh, mic. I uh, Like in terms of sound quality, it's very difficult for me to pick the sound quality difference between this and the uh, more professional CO1U uh, podcasting mic, which I uh, use, which is a full-size uh, capsule one. Anyway, I thought we'd do a quick teardown of this because I've never actually uh, opened this puppy up. So let's have a squeeze inside. And uh, I've never t torn down the uh, CO1U either. So yeah, I don't know whether or not it's the physically the same. Like I'd expect with a surface area like this, I expect it to be a physically large uh, uh, capsule going on there. So I've done a whole series of uh, microphone videos, by the way, with uh, Doug Ford, who was the um, former uh, head designer at Rode Microphones, and he's a good mate of mine, and we sat down on the whiteboard, and um, he did like a five-part series with us on microphone design. So if you're... Re Whoa! Which <laughs> so if you're really interested in that, um, I just tore the shit out of it. Oops. I think... That was soldered on there. Oops. Don't do that. Um, but isn't that a nicely segregated design? They've got the mic up in here in its own uh, capsule. Is that... Um, it, I don't think they'd have any uh, shock-absorbing type stuff in there. Probably not. But I like how it's physically separated with the cable like that. That's very nice. It probably means that they can uh, test these individually. And then, uh, you know, they might, I don't know what sort of test rig they'd uh, have for these sort of things, but they might be able to, you know, test and characterise uh, individual mics or whatever. Maybe not at this sort of price level. Um, but I like how they've, uh, they've separated that design there. That is, that is really quite jazzy. So anyway, let's, uh, let's go in here, shall we, and have a look at the capsule. So, uh, let's put that aside. So I completely screwed the pooch there. So this is probably just some sort of grounding wire, I would uh, suggest. <coughs> is it grounding the uh, shield or whatnot? Okay, let's... Okay, so we've taken off that. And, um, and you have to remember that there's one active surface. There's only one active surface. You can't flip it around and talk into the backside of it here. So um, Doug Ford goes into and explains, uh, you know, the all the various different types of microphones and how they work and the cardioid patterns and whatnot. But uh, let's, well, let's get inside here. So this is the backside. The black is the backside. Oh, I can see two. 
Oh, that's interesting. Oh, look at that. There's two capsules, so I don't have to take the front one off. There you go. Why do they have two capsules? That I did not expect that. I expected one large capsule. But no, they've got two separate capsules. And yep, that is a rubber. Yep, they've got those uh, suspended in a rubber shock mount. So that's very nice. So that'll, you know, if you've got this uh, clipped onto your computer, for example, that would uh, eliminate any fan noise, for example, like the old uh, Surface tablet, even the new one um, has a built-in uh, fan, the i7, the model I've got, the i5 doesn't. Um, but that's really good. They've got those properly mounted in the uh, rubber shock um, thing right in the center. So that's really groovy, but why they've got two? Fascinating. Might have to ask Doug. Hmm. Anyway, um, that's a teardown of the capsule. That's pretty much all I expected to see in there, really, was the, uh, was the mic. Just didn't expect to see the two. Now, where was that extra wire soldered onto, I wonder? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Might have to check that out before I put it back together. And then... Do we have a board that this, I don't know if this one would slide out. No, because we've got a switch there. No, we've got a, a cam shell design. Probably have to get a knife in there and break, break into that one. Oh, yeah, I'll get back to you. All right. Let's. Whoop. There we go. We were able to, we were able to pop this puppy open. Come on. There we go. There we go. We're in like Flint. There we go. Oh, they got shielding. Uh, that's um, screening uh, spray on the bottom side of the case. That's nice touch. They've got... Oh, oh. Well, that's that's the crystal. Wow. Okay. Oops. That's a 32 kilohertz watch crystal there. Almost screwed the pooch on that one. But... Uh, well, there we go. Have to get in there with the macro lens and uh, have a look to see what one they're using. Stick with me. I'll just uh, screw that macro lens on there. Get in here. I'm not going to polish this video. I'm not going to polish a turd. Can we see a number on that? There. Hang on. I'll take it over to the... <coughs> That is a 100B. I looked at that under the uh, Mantis microscope, and that's a CM at 6500B from a Taiwanese uh, company. It's a 6 that you might not be able to... Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go, just see it. Can you get the right angle light? And that's a 16-bit uh, uh, USB ADC. And uh, yeah, at 48 kilohertz, 16 bits, exactly uh, as advertised. So that's all I expected to uh, find in here, pretty much. And they're going to have a, uh, a front-end amp on there. So let's... Well, no, probably not. Probably goes directly into the ADC. Does it not? Hmm... I wonder what that little puppy there is. Let me have another look. And yep, that one down in there is a Japan Radio Corp 2115, and that's a uh, just a dual uh, audio op amp. Nothing uh, particularly special. So there you go. That's all she wrote inside the Samson Go mic. I rather like that. Um, it's let me get rid of the macro lens again. Sorry, I'm not going to bother to edit this video. I'm too lazy. And that is all she wrote. So two capsules inside there. Um, that is interesting because this is not a. I didn't didn't believe this was a stereo uh, mic. I, I thought this was a mono. I might have to check the specs again. But uh, 
I'm, I was under the impression that this was simply a mono mic. So whether or not they're using dual capsules for sums and then... No, but there's no DSP happening in here. There's nothing like that happening. It's just an ADC. Um, it's got a little 8851 processor in there. They can't do anything serious. That's just, you know, for the uh, USB. So it's basically just... Uh, uh, shuffling the data, uh, converting the data and shuffling it directly out the USB into the PC. So um, there can't be any doing any fancy DSP with the uh, two mic inserts there. So I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'll ask Doug and uh, if he's got any comments, I'll let you know. But anyway, there you go. There's a quick look inside the Samson Go mic. A very nice mic if you're after uh, decent quality audio for your uh, laptop on the go and things like that. If you're after one for like a PC use, then the Samsung CO1U uh, USB mic is just a bigger, badder ass uh, mic. I, uh, that's one I use for, I'll link them in down below, I guess. Um, I use these uh, all the time for recording all my videos, except the one I'm recording at the moment, which uses the built-in mic on my Canon, um, what is it? Canon HFG30 camera. Yes, I use the built-in mics on the top because they're pretty decent quality and I'm only like 30 centimeters away tops. Anyway, hope you like that. Catch you next time.